Now I'd like to show you a few examples of effects in use in a couple different areas. The first place I want to show you is effects in cues. So I've pulled up just uh, some effects that I've made, uh, some cues I've made, and we're going to go look at this one. Um, so we're going to open up the synthesized image. And inside here, what we've done is we've added effects uh, on top of these. These are just by themselves. There's nothing else. These are simple frames. Uh, these are duplicated just for brightness. Um, that's all. The, all the uh, effects are here. These are all oscillation effects. Um, and they're basically what I've done here is I've created um, where it has a, a position change that will be, if we disable this one, what it, if we disable everything, what it will do is it'll just change on the x-axis uh, four discrete steps um, in a linear, uh, four discrete steps from negative, uh, from, from uh, negative 50 to 50. Uh, and this during four beats, um, so on each beat it'll change position. And then it's the the uh, acceleration option is four discrete steps. So on each beat it'll be on a different position with it, negative 50 to positive 50. The next thing I added was a rotation Z. Um, and this what this does is it will rotate um, neg uh, 60 degrees and negative 60 degrees every six seconds, uh, just as an offset, um, so it doesn't it kind of has a little bit more of a doesn't look repeated every four every four beats uh, it'll be a little bit different every time so but it's still on every beat it'll change um, it'll it just goes between six beats between negative 60 and 60 degrees the next thing I did was added another position X which is smooth so it'll go back and forth a bit negative 30 negative 30 and this goes um, every beat so it kind of moves it a little bit back and forth um, between negative 30 and 30 um, on top of the position X before it has the four discrete steps. So it still has movement in every single one. And the last one I did was a hue scroll. And the hue scroll just changes the color of all these on each beat as well. So every four beats, it'll change the color of the key of the, uh, of the frame. That's originally, uh, what is it, red, green, blue, and pink, as well as some white hot points inside of it. So if we show it, you can see them going, um, and it's a really cool effect, and it uses all these oscillation uh, effects to do it. The next example I'd like to show you is inside of uh, the Timeline tab inside of Beyond. Now, when you create a new anything, an event on the timeline, this is where those uh, seven basic effects uh, that we talked about previously show up size rotation position color brightness visible points and scan rate now default uh, the in timeline effects are key effects you want to use key effects a lot because you can have their positions and that's almost entirely how the timeline works out it's it's it's, it's key effects within the space of events um, and you can, you know, it works the same way as it does in the effects inside of um, inside of the anywhere else. Um, they're just shown in a different way on timeline. That way, it's it's much more adaptable for a timeline type of scenario. Um, and then you have your key. Basically, you can key out all those things. It'll pop up in a new window when you create a new key instead of being right there, um, and that sort of thing. The other way to look at it is if you go over here to the effect side here. This is shows you all of the effects inside of the event, and then you can click on it, and it looks exactly the same way as it does inside of a another event that we've already looked at beforehand. And then it's just here, and when you click on the different um, areas here, it will move the uh, time bar over here as well. Um, it's your choice whether you want to work in here or you want to work on the timeline. It's all up to you. It's all personal preference. The last major part place I wanted to show you uh, effects is in the quick effects space. Um, now in here, what we've what you can do is you can click on empty space, and if you go to the effect tab here, while we're in the grid section of Beyond, and it'll show you okay, this is the effect for the quick effects layer five, effect thirteen, which happens to be right here, and then you can add effects like say uh, we want to add it a zoom, and then all of a sudden this is a zoom. So if we have uh, let's see, we just go to a static shape. Um, this zoom it works it's right there it's in there and it works automatically this is how this is an easy way to add um, effects down here into this area um, and this is how they work and uh, that's how you can use these quick effects to help uh, help you get going and uh, create your own effects down here which can be added later on to things that you've already made um, and that's a really cool way to use effects